Hey, buddy. Good to see you, buddy. See you. Thanks yeah. for joining me. Yeah. For a Jameson Castmates and Tonic. Cheers. The Jameson Castmates and Tonic Social Serve Series. On Off The Ball. 22 years, right, since... Uh, God, you're making me feel old. Thanks. Since both of us yeah. walked into the university in Limerick. Mm. Long time ago now. First play, well, first contracts we signed, part-time contracts. Mm. Did you get a part-time or full-time? No, I went on a tour to New Zealand and I got a full contract on the back did, yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the time, the thinking was, sure, why would you sign two years? Sign, how sign that, a one year. Yeah. How did that tour to New Zealand go in 97? Um... Because I was on standby and it was... Yeah, it was tough. It I was, was tough. It was... But it was my first tour. So there have been obviously a lot of guys who've been tours. So I was delighted to be kind of considered. And a lot of the senior players, I think, kind of bailed out at the time. So we, it was very much a developmental tour. Um, but going down to New Zealand, like playing, you know, some of the best teams in the world. Um, it was a great experience for me. But... And then uh, you're back to... Back after was, that tour yeah. into pre-season with, with, with Munster. Yeah. There was an, an edge to that um, whole Munster environment back then because, and a rivalry because of the club game, game in Limerick. Yeah. I played for Shannon, you played for Gary Owen. Um, the Cork boys obviously had their clubs. Uh, there was a few young Munsters lads. Um, what was that like? Well, it was, it's akin to what, what, what your the provincial th- system is now, like, and, and the supporters and everything, you know. So um, Limerick is obviously a hotbed of it, but yeah, but even among the Cork clubs, you know, that that healthy rivalry, I'd say it was as well too, was brilliant. You, it made the AIL, you know, that the, the, the crowds that clubs got those days was, was brilliant and it just fed into the whole excitement of, of playing for your club and play, playing for your Do you parish. remember playing against me now? What was I like to play against? <laughs> really <laughs> nice. Absolutely <laughs> filthy. <laughs> annoying. I remember, yeah, I remember the Clarify first... Clarify for first people what well all this annoying thing is about, that you'd love to play with me, but you hate playing uh, Well, Quinny, yeah, exactly, yeah. You, you know, but or maybe you hate playing with me as well. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I actually I hated playing against or with yourself and Eddie Halvey, because the two of you have to separate you the whole we'll time. You, you'd be running from rock to rock, giving out to each oh, other. Right, okay. It's like, oh, are you playing yeah, rugby? It's a good skill, like, to be able to talk yeah, while you're running yeah. and, and sprinting and, uh, you and manage the whole game as well, isn't you it? Remember you used to get to me, uh, me to, get, to say, no, Wally, in this game, just calm me down now. If I'm losing, it. Yeah, losing. you were my psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> I, lo- I, looked, I looked at you, um, well, particularly when we played for Munster at the start, and I was like, I had this red mist and this kind of yeah. psycho yeah. Uh, temperament that would take over sometimes in the heat of battle, and I would have to... I was there, who's the, the soundest, calmest, quietest fella? And obviously you were right beside me yeah, in the background. Yeah. I'd say, I, I, remember, I, I remember that really well, saying, Wally, keep me right now today. It was just keep like me a calm. chant. It was just like a chant. You, you'd be afraid. But you did but it was, but it was brilliant. But that, that How could you keep yourself so quiet? I don't know. Just I, was, I was always so flat. I, was just, <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to do anything but my job. I think uh, I was just... I think I was focused when I was on the field and, and f- probably worried that I'd make a mistake or get kind of drawn into something that you know the other team are trying to get you to draw into because then they have you, you know. Yeah. So I just wouldn't give them the satisfaction, I guess, of, of you know, I suppose winning that psychological battle. But you were different because you, that, that competitive side that you had, I mean, that was contagious for all the rest that of us. That probably helped me in certain ways, but got me into trouble in well, certain ways. Well, it helped ways. the whole team, Quinny, you know? Yeah, but you were an athlete. You were, like, I, I didn't know you before then. Um, and uh, I remember seeing you first, and I was going, wow. I want the muscle that Wally has yeah, in his body, we and the speed and the sprinting. You could run faster than most of the backs. And whereas, I suppose, you came into, uh, you came in like a professional into the start of a professional group, whereas we didn't have a clue. I remember doing weight sessions in UL and thinking, this is great, we want to look good and we want to put on muscle, but it was it, we, there was no focus on muscle endurance and we'd leave the, the gym afterwards and we'd eat, we'd go up to the the, uh, the restaurant in the old UL and uh, we'd have deep fried chicken fillets <laughs> and chips and stuff. Yeah. And we think, we didn't know anything and about the cul- that. The culture was, was definitely very different and it changed quite radically in, in, in a few years, but certainly starting out. Did you enjoy it? Uh, I thought it was living the dream like I, at the start. I, I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed it much more when it became more professional because you're, you're kind of trying to win matches, but you knew kind of deep down that we weren't doing 
what we needed to do off the field to win games. I think when we when we first got that bit of success, and we got a bit annoyed. I think we were in there for a couple of years with Munster. In the first year, as you said, like there was only six or seven, I think, full time. So we'd train in the evenings and the mornings. But then as, as those kind of provincial contracts became the norm, you know, and you suddenly had a squad that we could train together and they brought in Fergal O'Callaghan came in as fitness coach. And for me, that was the biggest one because that 99, I think that tour to Australia, I was, I was left out of it. Um, and I had a couple of, couple of very middling years before that in terms of, of um, my form, um, probably because we weren't, I wasn't training hard enough, probably was training hard, harder before I came into you Munster. You were too nice, Wally, you were, you were, you were too, just too nice, that was what it. What do you mean? You were always had a smile on your face, uh, you were never narky. I was narky. laid back. Incredible yeah. athlete, totally laid back. But I wanted, all, I look, wanted to all, be like you. Um, we were all good athletes, Quinny, but we all had different, like, different I, strengths, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't run long distance stuff. And I'd always look to most of the other guys, even Axel, like if you know, long distance stuff, he'd run it all day. And, be, you know, whereas I'd sprint, right, 50 metres or whatever it was. But sure, I'd be, I'd be goose then for, for an yeah, our plan, another 10 our, when minutes. Sh when Shannon played Gary Owen in those days, our plan was stop Wally at source, because if he, if he gets up um, some speed, you're in big trouble. So I used to just do that at the line out, just hold on to your jersey yeah, at the back oh, of walls. I yeah. was just a night of life and out that of was, that's, And I remember you'd, wa yeah. you'd warn me like in such a nice way, Quinny, <laughs> stop that. <laughs> Quinny, stop doing that. I'm warning you now, Quinny. And I, could, I just couldn't take you serious. Because, but then there was a few times where oh, yeah, there, you get to a certain stage, then yeah, yeah. The, the red mist was for you. And I <laughs> yeah, it was only you could get me to those I know, places. But I, had to, I had to back away then and kind of <laughs> leave him off for a while, and then you'd calm down again, and you'd kind of go, Quinny, I told you already, and yeah. I knew it was a camera one. That was I it, remember yeah. you'd lift Paul, Paul Neville at the back of the the, the line out. Um, you throw it to the tail, and yeah. I just keep hitting your hand. Yeah. And Paul Neville had dropped down about an inch or two, two inches, and the, the ball had just rolled over it, the yeah. back. He'd never Cull catch that. Yeah. Cullum McMahon, I told Cullum or, or Eddie, whoever played there, um, just watch me do this, and you'll catch it clean, and <laughs> off we'd go. And then you'd be running down the field after me, Quinny, I'm telling you. <laughs> And I the, best, the best one was when the other back row would tell you he'd actually kind of try and say the ball is going here, the ball yeah, is yeah, going yeah. here. You uh, didn't know whether to believe it. Of course, me, it would you go there. Blame me then for standing on your ankle one time as well. Oh, that was the first game. Yeah, no, yeah, it wasn't yeah. me, and there's no uh, video evidence to prove sure, that. So. Sure, I'd like to see that and someday. Uh, yeah. You know that, yeah. that you causes were a bit of harder upset. to get on with the Gary Owen fellas because that's he, not he, he true. fancied that's yourselves not true. a bit you, more that's, than, that's just than a the Shannon you lads like or the, the, the young monsters lads. Uh, so no. you wouldn't train with us. I remember in that's 90, true, actually, 97, yeah. 98, so we, because we were, a lot of guys were part-time, mm. a couple of full-time, and Dave Mahidi, who was the, the head of sport in UL, was looking after our fitness. But he'd only come in once and every three yeah, months, you know. Give, but he'd try and give programs and stuff like that, and he couldn't. He was working in the university. And this is how, how amateur the thing was still. Yeah. But um, suddenly we, 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 we were like, I remember for a couple of days saying, where are all the Gary Owen players? And someone said, they're up training on the uh, track. No, that's, yeah, no, we, we used to train at nine in the morning, I think, was it? Yeah, we'd yeah but at he, half he eight, made yeah. a conscious decision to say, let's, let's get ahead. Because think you were thinking was, still yeah. at the club, get the Gary Owen fellas fitter than the Shannon and the Owen No, Monsters I don't think it was that. I think, I think we were just... And we probably shouldn't have done it as as a Gary Owen group. That was a, was that was funny. a big mistake. It but it was kind time. of the way it was at the time. Because we went to Giles Warrant and said, "Look, we're not fit enough," and and we weren't doing the training that we needed to be doing. I think yeah, we we, we talked to Gary Owen as well, uh, fit enough either. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it. We needed because you were winning all the AIL titles at the time. That was it. People often say, "What do you miss?" I remember that that period was a very fun period because even though we didn't win a lot. Um, but we learned a lot, and it was mm. great to see guys uh, like coming together. You know, when we first met up, we were it was a bit forced at the like, start. It was, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. because but none of us had a clue how to kind of we were kind of gel together. Mm. You remember what Decky Declan Kidney said to us about that oh, we can win the European Cup someday, and we thought he was crazy. Like, yeah, we did a goal set. Remember that? I can't remember who it was. Was it Woody or someone or Langford? Yeah, and some of us were kind of half. Somebody at kind some of, of yeah, kind has of to be like we can't win the European Cup. How yeah. the hell can we do that? We, we all laughed, we did. We, we can beat laugh, an yeah. English team when they come to Thoman Park here because mm. we can get our emotion through the roof or the yeah. crowd will go mad and we'll, we'll, we'll maybe have a, uh, you know, make it a frightful situation mm. for them. But that whole thing I, I, I remember, and you mentioned it a minute ago about wanting to get better each year and the professionalism, and it was incredible. Look at the centre Munster have now going back, you know, you go back 22 years ago where we started, where the university, the new sports building is built, 
Do you remember we used mm. train on that? We used train on Monday, that with Dave Tuesday Mahidi, yeah, evenings, yeah. And with potholes we had and rocks dog, and everything. Yeah, in it. and we yeah. had a dog date with Dave, and we had a dog that trained with us, and he he bit Killian Keane in the That's arse right, one day. Yeah. <laughs> and we thought it was brilliant. It's like, is that the uh, dog that Claw strapped his little GPS unit onto? And he, yeah, he came yeah, back with great scores. Fitness, yeah, you yeah. know. But um, so we went 2000 final, 2001 semi final, which we should have won. 2002 final again. 2003, here's another semi-final that we've lost, yeah. that potentially there was that much in, in it, and the final is on in yeah. Dublin against the French team. So we, we went four years there of... Nearly there, nearly, yeah. yeah. And we yeah. hadn't won it. Yeah. And like genuinely, all those, when you look back at them and you, you split the margins and look at it, bounce of a ball here and there. Mm. I'm not sure I could say strongly say that we should have beaten Leicester in 2 I don't think we did. They were a better side. They we were a good put, team. We, we could have. We, we could really have. put it up to yeah. them. A couple of small things went against them, but they were a very good side. But I think 0-1, the Northampton one, yeah, definitely in 2000, we should have won. We should have won that semi against yeah. Stad in, 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 in 01. And definitely... Definitely no three. That was a very small margin. I, th I think I think the fact that we were we were a lot of us playing in, in the in the in the national team and coming back, we had a closeness there, and we had you know, you probably standards were bringing back to Munster. I think that helped everyone as well too, um, because things moved on in terms of like defence. Remember, it was it was a good number of years before we had a defensive coach in Ireland, yeah. um, and you know when we yeah, and it was very something very simple to 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 bring in, but we brought that back to Munster a bit, and then. It was a couple of years later, we had we had we had that in Munster as well too. Um, so we finally daily. win it in 06. Yeah, incredible. But it's funny, like contrasting going, memories going, for me. You now, first of yeah. all, I'd say obviously I got injured in round one in Sale. Mm. Uh, that was a tough one for me. Because, yeah, okay, yeah, because I'm going to remind you of that. Yeah. So I went off injured, and yeah. who comes on for me? Yeah. Trevor Hogan. I was warming up because I just naturally got up and said, "Geez, better better get warmed up." And it was kind of, uh, as I'm kind of stretching, I see Trevor Hogan taking off the, the, the which is no slight on Trevor. Uh, but David Wallace, the, the, this wonderful British and Irish line and inter Irish international is now in a period of, I'm second sub. I was a low point of Munster for me. I uh, was, uh, yeah. On the Munster team. Because yeah. the back rows, myself, Leamy uh, and... Probably Axel at the time, was it? Axel, yeah. 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 Dennis Leamy, Axel, uh, myself. And it was, it, that was hard because I'd come off th back at three years uh, under Gaffney where I, you know, where you'd pick five back rows and one of you get dropped. Kinda there was a fair uh, bit of rotation. For four that. places, one of you get dropped on the Friday, you, you know, basically me, found out. And I always knew you, it was me. me Dennis Lee, me. But there Jim was no Williams rotation, no, it was, it was I was out. Because I was coming back from injury rotation. the first. You were just uh, yeah. out for <laughs> yeah, a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, and then obviously Decky came in that year and, and I thought, right, new regime, you know, could have started fresh. Um, so the, here's, this is the low point for you. So well, how look, you and, turn I, that around? and that's just because, look, obviously you're you coming out, you hope a back row gets an injury and then, and then you hope you come on. But yeah, I do remember going back to so the stand and kind of going. I got injured. You were actually hoping I was no. going to get injured and sail? I, did I say that? Yeah. No, I said um, it was tough going back to the stand and kind of sitting down and going, geez, right, this is where I stand here. Um, and it, it was actually, I think, Brian Hickey, in fairness, he, he kind of said well, it, was, it was his call and, and he, he wanted to shore up the line-out. It was about and the line-out, yeah. yeah. Well, but I, I think it actually came on eventually in that game. Yeah. Um, From that sale game, Munster turned yeah, it around, yeah. five matches, win the next five game, Wallace is back in the team. I got back the following week, thank God, yeah, and, and I, on the back of three or four, I know so you can crap for you as well too, but on the back of three or four tough seasons for me where I wasn't playing well yeah. and, you know, wasn't being selected and... Um, wasn't going well for me, but suddenly, you know, got my chance the following week, and, and it kind of all turned around. And uh, you know, I, it, it, it's it's hard to put your finger on it. You know, you have three or four seasons where you're trying your hardest, trying to do everything, and yeah. it's just not working. And then all of a sudden, you get a chance, and you play well, and then you and play the well, again. well, and yeah, exactly, and you're winning, and and suddenly you just kind of go, wow, it's it's a totally different. Uh, I remember how environment we were, we were confident that we could go to sale in that first game and get yeah. a result, and we got. You know, man, handle it was just a bad night with the injuries and everything, and and really negative. And then the team go on a brilliant run and win five games. And Barry Murphy comes into the yeah, side brilliant and brilliant try, and yeah. he's scored a great try in Thomond Park against mm. Sale. And um, Ian Dowling is now on the team as well. So there's a few new guys coming. Yeah, in yeah. And, and I remember being Flag over in Ka in, yeah. and Fla as well. Jerry Fla came in as well. He got the chance, and Fla was incredible that year. So those three guys made a real, a real impact. I came on for the last four minutes in that game against Biritz and 
didn't touch the ball, didn't hit a ruck, uh, just ran around in circles and tried <laughs> to avoid any sort of decision. Did you hit anyone? Make. Nothing. You didn't even I make anyone around, kick you? No, ran in around. The earth. No, no, I didn't. I ran around circles and jumped around then when the whistle went as yeah. if I'd won it all on my own. <laughs> Uh, so it wasn't that four minutes, it was the previous kind of nine yeah. years. Ah, exactly, this, this yeah, exactly. This was it. it is, I, yeah, I was yeah. so lucky that I got to be part of it. I felt so sorry for Stephen Kyo because he'd been involved and he was the one that was going to be on the bench yeah. if I didn't make it back. And But, you know, it was, it, was, it was more the nine years previous and getting back from the injury. But that's my, they're my emotions from it. So I felt I won it on my own that day for you. Going through all those previous years and the group that we built and the the, the team spirit that we yeah. built to finally well get again our hands it was it was trophy. in stark contrast for me for the previous three or four years you know because um, it was what, 2001 those foot and mouth internationals where um, you know the replay in, in October where I, I injured my shoulder and I kind of got to the end of that season but playing worse and worse because my shoulder was hanging on by a string and uh, you know it just it it, it those those four years were, were tough. So I think just to be in that positive rugby environment again and getting to a final was just my, and I, going into that final, I just it was the most relaxed I've ever been going into a game. It was funny because I usually usually get really wound up for games, you know, as in nervous and that. But it just I I think it came to a point where we just this couldn't. Yeah, well, for the supporters, we just couldn't come away today with three finals and not. Uh, and, and, and you know, I remember just going into the crowd. I know we had the the overall uh, overwhelming support there on the day, but it just felt like this was our time, you know. Um, and just the confidence that we had going into that season. I remember saying that the earlier on to the season to my wife, Aileen, I said, "I have a really good feeling about this season. I think it's it's going to be our season, you know, that we're going to win." That was kind of reward for. And all that was quite early years. on, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, so the most calm I'd been going into into any game, I think, you know, in a long time. And and uh, it was just look, it was. It was at the end of it. It was funny. It was more like a relief yeah, rather than lots of people crying here, there, and everywhere. And we were always crying. Done it. Yeah, always <laughs> cried. Overall, when you look back at the Munster career, I know there's an Irish career there as well, and there was a couple of Lions tours for you. Um, that whole Munster story and journey, it was incredible, wasn't it? Was it was phenomenal to, to see it now. like back in those early days where it was so rudimental. It was so you know there was no structure. There was no full time profession. There was only a few handful like. And to, to where we got to, you know, in a short space of time. Where Munster are at now, obviously, we were, I think we were lucky to have the careers we had and be experienced those, that, that whole journey from the yeah. semi-pro yeah. stroke to amateur all. to where the game yeah. is at now and, the, and where the Munster lads are at now. And the culture and, changing from and as maybe well, you know. Creating their own legacy. And, and is it unfair that they've been, at times, rightly or wrongly, kind of compared to the teams that won the Heineken Cups and an expectation of pressure that they're supposed to do the same and maybe when they haven't done that that it's it's inhibited them and it's is it a bit unfair if supporters didn't care if if coaches if players didn't care and want to be at that high standard and, and competing and winning European Cups then you know why do it and th their time is, is close in the last two years they've been semi-finals you know um, I think certainly last year was very very close and it was a, a tough away game um, and they have yeah. the players like the likes of Joey Carby coming in, the likes of Ty Byrne, you know, with the other players developing and, and hopefully the injury profile. Do you have any issue with guys from other provinces coming Not in from Munster, no. from, where, from, from our time, or, or overseas players coming in? What's your take on that? No, some and, and say, I, well, think, I think Munster like some of our, our best players who've, uh, who've, who've kind of set the tone and bought into the... You know, I've been outside players. You know, you've mentioned the likes of of Langford Woody. I know he's he's, he's monster really, but you know, coming back from Harlequins and bringing other Mike other Mullins, things, Jason yeah, Holland, these yeah. Guys but even the years. Leinster guys, you know, think of Andrew Conway, Joey Carberry. You know, um, uh, and Felix yeah, Jones. yeah, Felix. Like, and he he epitomizes in terms of attitude and and uh, you know, leaving everything on the line. Um, Six months out from from a World Cup, we finish in this disappointment. Are yeah. they capable? Given what you saw in the last couple, number of years, with people are talking and saying, and I think rightly so, that Joe Schmidt is the greatest coach we've ever had. Suddenly they're not a bad team now, surely, and suddenly he's exactly, not a bad yeah. coach now, surely. There's some well, tweaks and changes. Well, Kidney was brilliant, wasn't he? He said like you, you're going to things are get amplified and exaggerated, and you know the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Like you don't become a bad team overnight. So, um, and yeah, good teams have to evolve and coaches and they have, have to. to and look, I'm and sure it'll be very good for them. Obviously, it'll release an awful lot of pressure on them. 
but also like they'll, they'll have to evaluate their own game plan and you know maybe adapt it a little bit and we didn't see an awful lot from Ireland and maybe they're uh, guilty of keeping a lot in reserve for 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 the six, uh, for the uh, World Cup so they can turn it around you think and yeah. would you be optimistic we've still got to beat providing we get out of the group we've still got to beat in New Zealand and South Africa I keep saying to people That's Japan tough. could be That's awkward tough. and Samoa could be awkward in and the pool stages yeah look at Scotland I know but Scotland people are saying well it's a it's a shootout to win the pool there but I just think Japan will have a load of um, Japanese qualified uh, Playing players at home. New Zealanders and Australians yeah. who played in the leagues there so they could peak for a World Cup and look what they did to South Africa Samoa if they get their act together they're very talented yeah um, so they could be tricky. But given we think that Ireland will get out of the group, they still got to beat New Zealand or yeah, South Africa. Yeah, so and South Africa with Razzy Rasmus down there and Jackus Nienbar, we saw what they did with Munster. Like, um, defensively, they're going to be very, very strong. And, and um, you know, Ireland have to kind of try and figure a way out, to, you know, if, if, if that they're going to try and play that same game plan against, if they do meet South Africa, you know, how are they going to, how are they going to work around that wall of defence that, that South Africa might have, you know, so they're going to have to try and come up with a few plans and no better man than Joe Smith to, to do that, but uh, we're going to see, have Let's to see, see a bit of an involvement of their game, I think, and we might see that over the summer, you know, they're playing Wales twice again, it's, it's great whether we'll have the same kind of teams, obviously you're not going to have both and there may be full some, strength. there may be some different personnel that ultimately might make a, la a last ditch push for a World Cup selection. Yeah, so well, with, with maybe the way the, the Six Nations are going to might open the door to a few, a few positions, guys. you know. If we don't get to a semi-final at a World Cup, it'll be seen as a failure. Is that fair or unfair? I it'll be seen can, as a, as a disappointment, we can, yeah. We can look back at all the other <coughs> World Cups and there's some yeah. mitigating factors that, um, for reasons we didn't get to semi-finals, there's a couple, the 07 one's a massive disappointment. Um, there's a few times where we've had a really good pool stage, had a big win or two, mm. like in 11 when they beat Australia and then got caught cold, I think, by a very good well site, yeah. we could have got to a final. Is it a case of a little bit of luck has deserted them? Do they need a little bit of good fortune to, to finally get to that kind of place where we've never been before? And um, if, if we don't get there, is this? You'd it hope failure? it's not coming down to luck, though, wouldn't you? You'd hope that you kind of yeah, sometimes, yeah does of it? course it does. But like, yeah, you you don't want to be relying on it, you know. And that's that, that's something you can't really control. So they're going to be wanting to control those, you know, whatever they can control, they'd be the best at it. But um, I think it probably would be a disappointment, of course. But it doesn't mean it's 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 going to be, you know, as we talked about, you know, New Zealand, South Africa. If if we do get through to the quarterfinals, that's a very very tough fixture, you know. So um, and with a, with a the Gaffer team that are coming in under the radar a little bit with Razi Erasmus, Jackus Nienbar there kind of at the helm. They're going to be a very, very tough team to beat. Um, and, and they'll be happy where, where they are at the moment. We saw in the last, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the, the, the championship, championship. Yeah, the rugby championship, how, how good they were in you know, beating New Zealand as well too. So they're going to be, they're going to be a sticky wicket, definitely. And, and so you're optimistic that Ireland can turn that disappointment of Six Nations <coughs> into... You're having a decent I, I am, and yeah. a real go at it. I am, because I think we have they're the players, players and we have the coaches. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And they, they're not, and look, they, those are... They've you know, played badly, we, we've got to acknowledge that. They, and a lot of this is, is, is on the back of one game again, you know, in Wales, where, you know, obviously that's very fresh at the moment, but um, we've got to take it over the, the last couple of seasons. You, you look, look back, that's only a point in time, that Welsh match, so let's look at the whole thing and let's... Let's try and uh, you know get get back to those ways. I'm sure it's only a few tweaks and, and whatever that can get them there. But uh, I think emotionally they're going to hopefully peak for the World Cup and that'll be make them a very powerful unit. Okay, well we've got to leave it there. Okay, thanks for joining me for a Jameson Castmates and Tonic. Cheers, great to see you. It's yeah, 22 you years on since we uh, <laughs> since we uh, first walked in the door in the yeah. university. And uh, where's the time gone? It's gone. It's gone. But it's been good times, Gunny. It's been good times for sure. The Jameson Castmates and Tonics Social Serve Series. On Off The Ball.